Welcome, my beautiful souls. Um, today we are going to do a reading for Taurus. This is going to be for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, many of you are intuitively guided to readings that aren't even your sign, but yet you know that there's messages for you. Well, that's your spirit guides. Um, you know, I read through my spirit guides and they connect to yours. And that's why one reading can resonate with so many people. Uh, I feel like we're one big soul family. So thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Uh, you could certainly be in love with the Taurus um, romantically, platonically. Same thing. Just remember your guides know you're here. They're going to give you messages. They're going to give you clarity. That's really the thing. Definitely feel free to ask your guides for signs of confirmation. Um, you don't have to. You know, they know you're here again. But if you, you know, if that makes you feel better. I feel like a reading, um, you should feel it. You know what I mean? Like if you watch a reading and you just don't feel it, well, that might not be the one for you. Or there may be like just a few messages. But usually, at least the way I feel is... Usually the whole reading is meant for you. Um, you just want to find your place within it. You know, again, because we're going to all be in different places. Um, but I feel like the readings are really a red map to help us live our ultimate life. Uh, but you got to be open. Be open. I also want to say happy holidays. Um you know, my heart goes out, you know, happy holidays. When I think about that, I don't know why I've been waking up lately, like almost in, like with sadness in my heart, because I think about those, you know, the happy holidays are happy for those who can afford it. That's how it's, that seems like what the holidays are about now. But for those who cannot, you know, like if you have children and like you don't have the money to buy presents or what have you, oh, it breaks my heart. I've been there. I know that energy. So, you know, I feel like we should all just send um, each other love. You know what I mean? Love, support, um, especially for those, again, who I don't know why I've been feeling that, but I have like I like. For a week, I've been waking up, and it's like the first thing on my mind. Even before I got out of bed, I'm like, ah, happy holidays. And I'm like, ah, um, you know, maybe because I know, I mean, I've been there myself. Um, my daughter's kind of going through that. And I know many of you are going through that. So I just want you to know that I am thinking about you. I am praying for you. And... um yeah, I mean, so I feel like, you know, as a soul tribe, let's just send out some beautiful, healing, loving energy to those who, you know, for whatever reason, putting happy in front of holidays may not be the case. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up in your reading, but it just popped in my mind. Um, so anyways... Uh, this, again, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided, you could certainly be in love with the Taurus platonically, romantically. Same thing, your guides know that, and um, they know you're here, so just be open. All right, so we are going to use, brought my coffee again, which is something, that's another thing, like, I feel like my energy has been allowed. Not super low, but low. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. Um, all right, so we're going to use um, five different decks. We're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. We'll start with Mother Mary. We're going to use the Gilded Tarot. Um, and sooner or later, I'm going to, you know, I love these for clarifying or to go deeper. Um, but then I wonder, like, are you guys sick of them yet? I'm not, but if you are, let me know. Uh, so we'll use these to go deeper, really, is what we do with these. This is why a reading is long, because I do go deep. You know, I, I well, I give it the time that I feel like your guides want me to give it. We will bring in the romance angels if love comes up. 
put those over there. And I brought back, oh, I brought, oh, let's see what that was, the Emperor, um, Carter Ares, uh, father, business owner, leader of the people. So I don't know, I feel like I just had to throw that out there. We will also use the Major Arcanas. And I really use these as bullet points, but I have to tell you, um, lately, wow, uh, they are telling their own story and they're relating also to your main reading. So I just love bringing them into your reading. It may be something I just continue to do. Uh, it does make it longer. And I know not everybody likes long readings, um, but. I feel like it brings so much substance to the reading that I'm glad I brought them out. For your main spread, Taurus, a deck I don't normally use for you, which is the Psychic Trove. You know, it's interesting. I went back and forth between you and Aquarius, you and Aquarius, and um, it's not that one, one over the other, but, you know, I just calm my mind, ask my spirit guides, which reading should I do? And you came up. So, Tar, and I, I promise you, I wasn't even planning on doing your reading. I was going to do Aquarius. But then I kept hearing, no, Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. So, Taurus, we're going to use the Psychic Tarot for you. All right. So, let's go ahead and begin this reading. You know, like everything in order. I'm going to bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. And let's start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Um, my grandson Joey is a Taurus, much too young to be watching this video. But I don't know why I don't mention him that often. Maybe because it is age. That felt good. All right, Mother Mary. Um, while I'm shuffling, I also want to just address one thing. I did a short video where I was reminding everyone that I do do, um, I do offer gift certificates for like, if you want to purchase a reading, a personal reading for a loved one, um, I do offer that. And a lot of people have been mistaken it as a free reading. Like every day I'm getting an email like, thank you for this free reading. I, I hate to say it, but they're not free. Um, it's just a reminder that, you know, you can certainly buy your loved one a personal reading. Give them a gift of clarity. And I am not putting an expiration date on it. So whenever, um, though I do want to say, if you're purchasing for someone else, Definitely let me know their name because I'll add them into my schedule. So whenever they're ready, then, you know, it shouldn't be too long. All right. Well, hello, marriage. Marriage. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Marriage. Okay. Hmm. See if anything else wants to come out. Nope. I always give it three shuffles just to double check. So marriage. Making a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, yourself, and a partner. Now, some of you who are not married, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Maybe we're going to be talking about the potential of future marriage. All right. We have the High Priestess. This is your intuition, your higher self. You know, some describe the High Priestess as the controller of the Akashic Records. Like everything that you have done, said, has been done to you. Everything is recorded. Um, and, you know, from what I've learned from my guides, when we do cross over, that's where we go. We go, like, it's a big library. This is what I've been shown. 
um, like in my mind's eye, it's like a big, beautiful library. And then there's the book of you. So we have the hangman. Um, but the high priestess to me really is your intuition. It's your higher self to guide you. And it's interesting because then you have the hangman who um, can be a pause in the action. The hangman's seeking wisdom, you know, like spiritual wisdom to use on this earthly plane. And maybe I don't move until I have that. You know, I may be looking for confirmation through the hangman's energy. Again, this is asking you to pay attention to your intuition. You know, that's where your signs are sent. Um, and sometimes it's just a feeling like something feels right. And if it feels right, I feel like what's, you know, like, let's just step into it and see. Let's also see what the hangman is. You know, he's swaying towards this direction. So let's see. Okay. Wow. Um, it's interesting because normally I only take three to four cards, but I also don't usually deny cards. Um, and here we go again. It's like the last reading I did. I swear they got, I think it was like eight cards. Well, you have a lot too. We have judgment. Interesting. You have judgment on one side of the hangman and the high priestess on the other side of the hangman. Judgment is your spiritual team, and they're calling you to the present moment. You know, your spiritual team, they're the ones who send you signs. So it's like they're blowing the trumpet to that hangman, but he's listening, he or she, because I'm sway there's it's swaying right towards judgment. Um, and judgment also talks about a rebirth. So guidance. To help you with this rebirth now and when i i shouldn't have said it like that because i don't feel like this is anything i have to worry about quite the opposite probably something that i really want in my life but how do i get there that's what the hey man is asking your spiritual team is saying we're going to help guide you listen to your intuition we have the devil card of capricorn um, it can certainly talk about temptations. You know, I feel like um, the devil's energy can certainly cast illusions. Something can feel real that's not. Um, some of you, you may have just overcome something. Or, you know, there could be something like a lower vibrational energy that kept pulling you towards it. And maybe now it's the right time to break it. All right, well, let's keep going. Well, the emperor made his way out. Card of Aries. Okay, I'm going to have to slide these over even more. Aries looking right over at the devil. The full, a new beginning. You know, that tells me you're going to listen to this spiritual um, advice that your guides. I'm going to have to slide them over even more. Wow. But anyway, a new beginning. I feel like what this is saying is trusting yourself. You know, the full is about taking a leap of faith. And it does feel like this is about you taking a leap of faith. You know, the emperor coming back out, it, it could certainly mean an Aries. Um, but I feel like more, it could talk about like something you want to do in the world. Maybe you put it off for some reason. Maybe you didn't think you'd be, you'd do well at it. Um, but your spiritual team is saying the opposite. You know, I feel like there may have been like something that needed to be I wanted to say broken, but I don't think that's the right term. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like we, it's important that we know not just our light side, but also our shadow side, because we have that. 
And the more we understand that, you know, like, have I been in the shadow side? Have I stopped believing that there could be changes or rebirths or new beginnings in my life? Am I willing to step up and maybe be the leader, um, you know, of your own life, but maybe even for other people? We have the world. Well, hello. So a new chapter. So the fool was the perfect energy for that. And then we have the death card, an ending of a chapter. Also card of Scorpio. And then we have the chariot that came out with that. Holy cow. I'm kind of glad I didn't look at how many cards I had because I might not have taken them. Um, but now I feel like they're all meant to be here. So, death card. And then the tower. And I'm actually going to bring the lid down a little bit more so you can see them. Holy crap. All right. So we have the tower right now mirroring the high priestess. The tower can certainly talk about disruption in your life. You know, something ended. Maybe you didn't want it to end. Um, this could be old energy you've been carrying around. You know, again, relating to the tower. I often feel in the tower, in this deck anyway, it makes me feel like someone's fallen from grace. Um, so to speak. But the death card coming right before that, you know, maybe it's talking about closing a chapter before the tower actually even happens. Because you have such a beautiful energy with the fool moving into the world's energy, just as judgment is asking you to do. And, you know, it's a, it is a little bit of blind faith. However, you are being guided at the same time. The hangman was seeking this wisdom. Well, the hangman is receiving it. But it's important that you be in the present moment energy. Because again, that's where your signs are sent. Sometimes I feel like a reading is your sign. Um, and, you know, I feel like um, this is the perfect time. Thinking of the end of the year where... Oh, by the way, I didn't even say this is for December 2024, but time is fluid. So I feel like you'll find a reading whenever you're meant to find it. Um, but what was I going to say? I do feel like this is an opportunity to really examine one's life and make some real decisions about like what stays, what's got to go. Um, you know, looking within yourself, you know, where have I been afraid to take a leap of faith? Um, like, what if I've been afraid to take a leap of faith in and, but taking it anyway, I, I feel like that's important, especially with judgment here, because you, again, you're going to be guided. Just trust that, you know, a high priestess, you kind of do want a calm mind to pay attention. However, let's say, you know, your mind's a little chaotic. I still feel like your, your spiritual team We'll get those signs across. Sometimes it comes through numbers. And by the way, if you see like multiple, like let's say you see 333 or 444 all the time, look that up because I often feel those are angel messages for you. Um, and it may also help guide you. Sometimes you just need to know you're on the right path. Should I take this leap of faith? Yes. I mean, that's what it feels like so far. Does it mean that one thing may have to end so a new thing begins? Potentially. Um, but let's remember in the world's energy, that means you're ready for it. That means your spirituality is pretty strong. Um, doesn't have to mean that, you know, you walk around like a spiritual being all the time. But you do trust your spirituality. Maybe you are trusting more and more within your spiritual team. Or let me put it a different way. Maybe you're understanding that, you know, you weren't just thrown down into this world without any help. You have a whole spiritual team that's assigned to you. 
and that's from your spirit guides. Your spirit guides have lived on this earth before, by the way. Your angels who have not lived on this earth and your angels really need your permission. Like, you know, call your angels in and give them permission to help you in any way. Archangels, the whole way up to God. You know what I mean? Like you have a whole spiritual team. You're never alone, though you may feel alone sometimes. Um, but, you know, if we can look at like some of the past past experiences as lessons, you know, things that taught us how to evolve ourselves. Well, that's a good thing. Hmm. That's a lot of cards. I feel like for those who are in a current relationship, uh, marriage makes even more sense with this energy because I feel, um, you know, probably each has to look at their own energy and understand, like, you know, am I being, am I being loving? Am I being part of this partnership or, you know, and also the other person? Um, because, listen, sometimes marriages can be saved. Sometimes relationships can be saved, but it's working out the issues. I do feel like, I feel like there is an opportunity to avoid this tower. Now, if the towers already happen, it's because it's moving you in place, you know, with the full moving into the world. But judgment helping to guide you, the hangman seeking that wisdom. Well, the hangman is receiving it. All right. I don't know if I cut these. All right, start with the main spread. We have the Eight of Cups just flipped itself around. Emotional withdrawal. First of all, eights do speak about a new beginning. Um, it may not be with whatever you're letting go of within the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups is um, the willingness to look within your emotional house, find clarity. Know yourself, you know, in any type of emotional situation. But let's say it's talking about love. And, you know, maybe something did end. But I'm telling you, it's so something else can begin. And I happen to just love this image because I feel like this person is sitting at the water's edge and just allowing the tides to take away their worry. You know, this may be where some of you find peace around water. Okay. But eights are about a better new beginning. Also the number of infinity as above, so below. Mm, love it. We have the sun. That's the light, or it's called light in this deck. Um, card of Leo. Leo's major arcana. Leo's ruler, really. But what I love, and you know, the sun is looking right up at judgment. So it feels like the signs will be very clear for you. I feel like for some of you, you've been going through some difficult times and you've been letting go. Some things you may not have even planned on letting go. And maybe it was just eclipsed out of your life. And it, it has taken some time, you know, to come back to yourself. But the sun is like a brand new day. And I love that it's also coming next to a number eight, which is about a new beginning. In the full, to me, represents the willingness to take that leap of faith. The sun's also your illuminator. So... I'm telling you, anything done in the dark will come to the light. 
And maybe it already has. And maybe that's why it's towers here and then this emotional withdrawal. But the sun's like a brand new day. Mm, rest and rejuvenation. Four of swords. Healing. The ability to overcome. Truly. And I find it interesting is this person's out in the woods. And um, I relate to that a lot. Also being an earth sign. You know, where I feel like when I'm out in nature, it does feel very healing. Um, you know, and allowing oneself to heal at the same time. You know, if there's something I wanted, but it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it. And maybe it did hurt. You know, maybe it is like uh, maybe someone was eclipsed out of your life, you know, and maybe it wasn't even your plan. So because emotional withdrawal kind of makes me feel that way. Like, what do I do now? What do I do now? Move into the sun's energy. You know, know that there's a brand new day. Know that new things are always opening up for you. And jumping into the fool's energy. You know, when I say jumping to the fool's energy, the fool is someone who lives in the present moment, just as your spiritual team asks. Fool is someone who has learned from the past and doesn't carry the regret, the anger, or what have you along for the ride of this new journey. This is someone who um, has found a sense of comfort within themselves. Now, it doesn't even mean that, like, okay, um, because sometimes I feel like, you know, we're not meant to know, like, where where is it going to end up? It's about the journey. That's really what it feels like here. Like, you're about to embark on this new journey. Will you accept it? Will you accept it? Allowing yourself to heal. You know, and I want to say, and I have a feeling some aren't going to like this, but I, I, I feel like I have to say it anyway. Um, there's really nothing that you're going through in this lifetime that you as a soul or a spiritual being have not already gone through. There is nothing you cannot overcome. And I know that from my own experience, um, because trust me, there are some very deep things that I had to overcome. Um, but the ability, you know, um, let's say you lost someone, you know, like to this world, um, or they left this world, you know, they're still with you. They're still with you. It's coming right under the father figure. Hmm. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Patience and planning. Seven of Pentacles, not really represented very well in this image, but I often feel the Seven of Pentacles is, uh, first of all, seven is a very spiritual number. So trusting within your spirituality. And if you have a hard time, trust within your spiritual team then. But to me, the Seven of Pentacles, patience for something to come about. Well, that's what the hangman's at, patience. Um, but now it feels like there's a soul, there's this, um, a seed coming to fruition. Seven of Pentacles, I relate to like your, your tree of life or like an apple tree. You know, I'm not going to pick an apple before it's ripe. Um but this may be the right time now. You know, that apple might be coming ripe. And I love that first you're healing. Doesn't mean you have to be completely healed. You know, maybe we're never completely healed. But we keep moving. You know, 
opportunity can show itself in the most unexpected of times. Again, I often feel the Seven of Pentacles speaks about um, seeds that your soul, some have already been planted. And you all, you do want to think about that too. If I plant no seeds, well then I have no harvest. Plant those seeds. Plant those seeds and watch them come to fruition right under the fool's energy so we know something is coming to fruition. Um, and planning, that relates a lot back to like the emperor. So let's say this is like a business plan, you know, or something I want to do, um, you know, in my creativity or in my, how I make my money. You know, putting a plan in place may help you. And some of you, while you're going through this healing process, you may be inspired. You may get this inspiration, um, especially with the sun right next to it. And it will be clear. And if it's not clear, ask your guides to send it again. But I feel like really what it is, it's opportunity. It's something that's opening up to you so that you can jump into the fool's energy, and the fool is moving into the world, the next chapter. Very spiritual time. Here's that seven to match it. You know, I feel like there's nothing to fear. Um, sometimes what we fear is the uncertainty. But this does, to me, it represents your soul's seeds of intention. And it's just time. Something's coming to fruition. So letting go of those emotions. Just Ace of Swords it says triumphant success. Triumphant success. Right into the world. I feel like right away that answers the question. If there's something new I want to begin, will I be successful? Yes. The answer is yes. Um, and I feel like it's in all areas of your life, not just like your business, but probably in all areas of your life. Some of you, you're really learning how to use your voice um, for good. If that makes sense, like maybe to help others your experiences like i could see someone like writing a book but writing a book because of the experiences i had because i feel like i feel like there's like helping type of energy but i feel like it's like more you wanting to help others all right we're going to take one more across Um, it could certainly also be communication. Like some type of communication coming in. Well, look at this. Spiritual union. Two cups. Soulmate energy. No doubt. And how do I love that you have success right next to that? Think about what seeds you're planting right now. Mm. Spiritual union, not just normally it says soulmates. But this one says union. And listen, maybe you were with someone who carried some lower vibrational energy. And um, because I do feel like, listen, you know, whether someone could have broken up with you. But I feel like whatever happened, and you may not like this. But I feel like it probably happened for a reason. Um, who's ever been eclipsed out of your life 
it's so we can move you towards this soulmate energy. And I also want to say, if this is talking about a current marriage, communication may be the key. Or let's just say a current commitment. It doesn't have to be a marriage. Um, but communication may be the key. All right, let's keep going. Well, hello, Triumph, again. This is a chariot. Interesting, coming under... Um, this is the um, Cancer's Major Arcana coming under a Cancer card. We have Mental Conflict. This is the Two of Swords. But it's under the Sun. So to me, I feel like the Mental Conflict is what the Hangman was in. Like, help me find clarity. Help me let, you know, and this is you talking to your spiritual team. Help me know, you know, which direction to move. Um, and really, I want you to think about, like, if something has been eclipsed out of your life, I'm telling you, it's so something new can come in. And that is always the case. You know, the death card talks about the closing of a door. So that a new door can open. And the and they're looking right over at the world. With the tower behind them. And you know. That's what it feels like. The tower is now behind me. Or I have the opportunity to put that tower behind me. Um, so again. This mental conflict. I feel like is relating more to the hangman. But the sun. It's going to be very clear. You know, the person in the Two of Swords does have a blindfold on. You can't see it here. But that means that there just may be something I don't want to face. You know, maybe something needed to end. Maybe just wasn't good for you any longer. And maybe you're just going to be so surprised at what is in store next. You know, Seven of Pentacles... I love the Seven of Pentacles because these are your seeds or your soul seeds of intention. These are, you know, seeds that we're planting, yes, in this lifetime. But often when I see the soulmates and the Seven of Pentacles in the same line, I feel like these, these two had probably already planted these seeds probably before they even came into this lifetime. And it was just about the right time. You know, let's come together at the right time. And then we have the moon. Um, Pisces Major Arcana. But it's the ruler of cancer. We do have a lot of cancer energy. So it may talk about a very loving time. You know, because we have so much cancer energy, you could certainly talk about that. Like, this is moving into a very loving time. Um, you know, it's interesting because the two twos that are out on the table are completely different, different energies. This one is like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But the, I feel like if that's the case, it's because... Maybe you haven't cleared the energy yet. Maybe you haven't like taken that dive within that your emotional house to find that clarity. Remember that eight, a new beginning. And that eight mirroring the soulmates. No beginning, no end. As above, so below. That's why I often feel that the soulmates, the seeds were planted before we came into this lifetime. And sometimes we just have to trust in that. This Ace of Swords is pointing right up to the full. And it could be some type of communication that comes in. Though I don't want to leave off the table that, you know, I'm often, I often say communication coming in. But if, let's say there's someone that, you meet and you feel this special connection too. Don't be afraid of reaching out because I feel like that's what it's saying. Don't be afraid of reaching out. 
And I love the Ace of, uh, Ace of Swords right next to the Soulmates. Especially with triumphant success underneath it. Probably great communication. You know what I mean? Like, you'll probably have um, deep, long discussions. You'll probably have very similar ideas about spirituality. And I could see you, like, spending hours just having this convers like different conversations with this person. Um, but I feel like it only deepens the bond. We have discontentment and boredom. So I do want to say it showed in reverse. So I'm going to leave it that way. Four Cups really talks about learning how to use your spiritual discernment relating to anything new that's coming your way. And coming into the Seven of Pentacles, I'm telling you, there's, there's certain seeds um, that are coming to fruition. When? Soon. Well, let's put it this way. As soon as you're willing to let the past be the past. You know, extract the wisdom, yes. But also be willing... Um, to step into, you know, chapters do end. We go through nine-year cycles. And when we learn that, like when we learn, especially with the tower here, you know, when we understand that, you know, not everything is meant to last, especially relationships. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the world or it's the end of your love life. It may just be the true beginning of it. You know, you might have learned a lot from your past, let's just say, lovers. And sometimes it's just simply, what well, now I know now what I don't want. I definitely feel like if someone doesn't come to the table emotionally available, then I can't see you. And I don't feel that. I'm just saying, I feel like, you know, if, because we're talking about the soulmates, I feel like both would have to be emotionally available to each other or to really have this success. So the Four of Cups ask you to use your spiritual discernment relating to the pinnacle that's about to come into your life. And I love it's after healing. Again, doesn't mean you're completely healed. But I have a feeling you're going to understand why maybe one energy has been eclipsed out. And now it's time for something new to begin. You know, it could certainly represent 2025. Or before. That we're in December. All right. Well, let's keep going. Oh, I was going to tell you. So the Four Cups... The lesson within the Four of Cups is learning how to use one's own spiritual discernment. That's what the hangman is like, you know, looking for spiritual wisdom, but to use on this earthly plane. Well, your spiritual team is like, oh, here I am. Here I am to help you. Here we are. And I love that the Four of Cups came in reverse. That means whatever is coming next, look at this, the waiting game also in reverse. You're not waiting any longer. If there's been energy or a person that you've been waiting for, and it's kept your life in this state of, let's say, uncertainty and unhappiness, I feel like your guide just saying, this is what we want you to consider ending. So that what wants to come into your life can come into your life. You know, you have free will. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like the soulmates, it's not about whether 
they're coming in or not with your free will. I feel like it's going to happen no matter what. It's what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be emotionally available to it? At least strike up the conversation. But I feel like what this is saying is if I've been waiting for someone to come around, you know, often I feel in this energy um, like being ghosted where one day there's communication and the next day there's none or the next couple weeks there's no communication. And then, you know, I'm trying to clear my energy. You know, it's a state of, what's the word I want to use? Because I don't like it at all. You know, where I'm putting my life on hold for another. Again, someone who maybe wasn't emotionally available. Well, this soulmate will be emotionally available. Not only that, but you'll fall in love. I can see where some of you are making that final phone call to someone also like, that's it. Whether they answer or they don't answer. Like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done waiting. I also feel like it's also relating to the Seven of Pentacles. Again, that seed, the soulmate seed coming to fruition and it's time. Some of you, maybe you meet this person while you're still connected to someone else um, emotionally. And you feel the difference within this energy compared to whoever you've been waiting for. Who's ever made you um, discontent. I definitely feel like you're just not taking it anymore. And I don't know, Taurus, I just cannot see you. You know, first of all, you're a very loyal sign. And I already know some are going to say, well, that's not true. It depends on each person. But deep down, I feel like that's really what Taurus wants. You know, like I, I especially as you mature. It's like the dating world and all that. Ugh. You know, I just want that special partner. I want that person who will be mine and me theirs for the rest of our lives. That to me is what the world speaks of the rest of your life. And I say that because it is the very last tarot card often feels the closest um, energy to God or your faith your beliefs. So it, it definitely feels like you're not waiting anymore. You're jumping to that fool's energy. There's feels like there's some type of communication that may come in. It feels like this is the right time, like divine timing. You've been seeking the answers. You're getting the answers now, but then it's is up to you. You know, like we can guide you, but it's a, we can't make you follow our guidance. We can certainly make you feel uncomfortable, though. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if that's the case, it's so you say no more, right? It's so you understand that if anyone's like got you waiting, got you on the hook, that's just not the way you you want to live your life. I already know that. I feel it. And I feel the anguish of that, especially for you. All right. There's the full again. Look at that right under spiritual union. Wow. Hello, patience. First of all, you have... Um, two energies that talk about patience. And this is temperance. And the patience is about divine timing. I also love it when temperance shows up in, if there's love on the board, really in any part of our life. 
but especially in love, because I feel like that's where we, we fear. That's what we fear more than anything, you know, it's like hard to give your heart when the heart's been broken before, but that we've all been through that. This is about trusting in divine timing. Well, this feels like divine timing. This feels like divine timing with the full, a new beginning under the, under the soulmates. The full, a new beginning. We're going to just take a leap of faith. The world entering into the next chapter. Listening to your spiritual guidance. You know, you get to say yay or nay. But I don't know why I would say no. Unless the two of swords is that strong of an energy. But again, the sun is going to illuminate that. You know, any blindfold you're wearing, you won't be able to deny it because the sun is going to make you see it. You know, the sun illuminates everything. But it's also, I feel like, a sense of comfort knowing that, first of all, anything done in the dark will come to the light. But this is coming in the light. That's the thing. Because it's following in eight, which is about a new beginning. How many times do we have energy that talks about a new beginning? The hangman's, that's what the hangman's looking for. We have mm, partnerships and alliances. Mm, mm, mm. It feels good. This is the Three of Pentacles. And then we have, oh, nice movement, choices, and decisions. So you are making a choice. You know, it is mirroring the Four of Swords healing. So I do feel like for some of you, you've been in a healing period. Um, doesn't mean you've been like in your bed healing. I mean, maybe. Um, because I feel like really, I don't really have the luxury of doing that, right? I have to keep living my life. I have to keep working. But this emotional energy follows me no matter where I go. And part of it, I feel like, is because I've been waiting. Maybe I've been waiting for communication. Well, you may get communication, but it may be from someone completely different than you think. Will you or won't you? Um, I feel like you will. Now, this is coming over Shadow, which is the moon, which is the card of Pisces, by the way, ruler of Cancer. Um, and, you know, I love this image because this is someone who... If you just look at the image, it's like my light self, my light self looking at my shadow self. And we do have to know ourselves, all of ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Like all parts of ourselves. And certain times your shadow self needs to come out. But now it feels like you're in your light energy, especially with the sun here. The moon can speak about uncertainties and that can be scary right but sometimes we're building things as we go you know it's ultimately saying a union but then we keep getting the full so you know the willingness to take that leap of faith wherever it may go now because it's a soulmate I know very clearly you're going to feel the difference because a soulmate, unless they're here to, you know, unless it's like a karmic, which may have been what some of you have been through, um, you'll feel the difference within the energy. And that is probably why the high priestess is first, you know, your intuition, trusting that very first instinct and then not overthinking it. You are receiving guidance 
it's clear. But your spiritual team over and over is asking you to allow yourself to have a new beginning. Now, it doesn't have to mean in all areas of your life. I do love the fool right next to the emperor also, because I feel like it means that you have, you carry healing energy. And it probably came through your experiences. Some of you, this could certainly talk about business ownership and taking that leap of faith on yourself. Um, you know, the emperor is the leader of the people. But the emperor leads through his, his or her, her own experiences. So I feel like I want, you know, in time, in time, you know, as things start to evolve, I often feel when the tower shows up in this type of reading, this is the energy where one day I'm going to understand that tower more and more. And instead of being like, damn you, tower, I'm going to say, thank you, tower. Because if this ending never happened, could this ever begin? Could it? If I continue to wait, even though I'm discontent in that energy, could this open up? Now, I do feel like there's a possibility. Because... This Ace of Swords feels like it turns these cards, really, the difficult energy around. So no longer discontent. No longer waiting. The willingness to have this new beginning. And by the way, the Fool is mirroring the Chariot over here, which really speaks about unlimited potential. What's the Fool? Fool says, triumph. But the fool, or, no, or I mean the chariot, the chariot really is about you finding balance within, first and foremost. Another seven, by the way. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, just like I was saying in the moon's energy, looking within my shadow self. Maybe even asking myself, have I been waiting for something or someone that probably is not going to make your life better? It feels quite the opposite. It's a temperance. Divine timing, my dear. But sometimes divine timing is waiting on us. You know, it's funny. It just remind me of a comment where someone wrote, I'm sick of divine timing. And I get that. I get that. But really what it means is as you clear certain energy, even the energies that you didn't want to happen, but you're able to understand it in a different way, especially as this starts moving towards you. And I'm looking again at the Ace of Swords. Well, I should add the Seven of Pentacles in there also. Because I do feel like these soulmates, their seeds had already been planted, and this feels like divine timing. So as uncomfortable as that tower had made me, it's really, in a way, saving my life. What I love about this energy is the celebration of who you are. All of you, all parts of yourself. Um, because I feel like this is the energy, especially with the sun here and judgment. You know, I kind of love that judgment is the one who is kind of guiding the soulmates together here. But to me, the um, three of pentacles really speaks about your individuality. 
you know, I, I get this feeling that someone made you feel less than, not worthy. Um, I don't know. I feel like someone was not you, them, you know, probably pretty comfortable in their shadow side. You know, you may have communicated like, I can't keep doing this. I can't, I can't keep doing this. But then you keep doing it. You know what I mean? And I feel like as long as I keep allow, as long as I keep allowing this person to get away with what they're getting away with, they'll continue being who they are. You know, because I feel like that's who they are. And I know this isn't easy to hear either, but sometimes we've got to realize that sometimes the people that we fall in love with, you know, they just don't know how to love. Now, let's put all that behind us. Because with the soulmates following temperance, well, really following the chariot, with the full underneath them, this tells me that both of these people will recognize each other's soul pretty quickly, maybe through communication, as we had these discussions, you know, like I could see you at a coffee shop, just talking to each other across the table, and like spending hours, like we just went in to get a cup of coffee, and oh my god, we look at our clock, and it's like, oh my god, we've been here for hours, you know, or even like sitting at the bar having a drink, and then time just go like time flies by and you don't even realize it because you're so enthralled through the communication. There's something you just know is right. I, you know, it doesn't mean that fear won't raise its ugly head. That's our human nature. Um, and that's why we have our spiritual team to help us to clarify, like, am I feeling this right? You know, the full, and where do we have movement choices and decisions, where to go? I don't even know where it went. Um, where the heck is it? Oh, it's right here. I haven't even brought it out yet. It's just a willingness to take a chance. You know, the moon can say that, yes, it can feel like, or let me put it a different way. Sometimes we go into or we meet someone and even though we feel immediately like this attraction and I'm not even talking like in the way someone looks. It's this feeling that we have. We just feel it. But then we second guess it. Then we overthink it. I want to know, is this something that's going to last? I feel like the world is giving you a hint. Though, don't forget about free will. Because you have a lot to say with this. You know, I feel like when temperance shows up in a reading, it's learning to work hand in hand with your spiritual team. Okay. Okay, spiritual team, I'm ready for something new. Help guide me. Which direction should I go? Ring, ring. Oh, hello. You know what I mean? Like, or again, you're out getting a cup of coffee. You're sitting at a table. Someone comes over and says, hi, can I sit with you? Okay. May feel weird, but you say yes. And then again, next thing you know. Time just, you lose time. You lose time. I'm actually going to move, move these over here. Because I don't want to overload you. Two, three, four. And then 14. That's where I'm seeing the four. Adds up to a five. So two, three, four, five. Progression. Ugh. 
I hate cold coffee. It was cold. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Mm, conflict and defeat. It's five. Speaks about a new beginning. Change. Have I been fighting for something that just keeps putting me in this energy? I keep feeling defeated. Maybe I do reach out and ask someone, why aren't you communicating? And then you come back with this, uh, I feel like a stupid answer. <laughs> mm, emperor underneath that. Interesting. All right. Let's bring in the Gilda Tyrone. Let's just go ahead and go deeper. You really have some beautiful design energy on the table. Um, first of all, the sun, your illuminator. You know, when the sun shows up in a reading, it feels like it's going to be a great time. It feels right. It's coming right under judgment. Your signs are going to be clear. Even though underneath the sun is that mental conflict where someone is wearing a blindfold, your guides can get through that blindfold. You know, it's the two of swords. It's not the eight of swords. It's not where, like, I'm literally hiding myself away from the world. Maybe I had been for a while. But now you're getting back into the world. You know, expect the unexpected. Allow the unexpected. You never know when something's going to happen. And I know that from my own life experiences also. All right. Let's make a little bit more room here. Um, yes, we will be bringing out the Romeo's Angels because we definitely have love on the board. I have to say the Emperor's been showing up in a lot of readings also. So, um, especially with patience and planning, that's exactly what the Emperor's energy is. Um... So, you know, I don't feel like this is just talking about love. I feel like it's talking about really all areas of your life. Whatever answers you're seeking, you're going to receive them if you allow yourself to receive them. Whatever towers that you've had, though, they hurt. You know, your team knows that. But they also know that they do serve you. And I know if you're in that energy, it's hard to hear. But what if, just what if, you're about to meet the love of your life? Why do you want to close yourself off to that energy? And I'm not saying that you have to even put that out there. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe you do. Um, no. No, you don't. You don't have to put it out there. It's already in your heart. That's what my spiritual team is saying to me right now. No, they don't necessarily have to say, I'm looking for love. It just has to be in their heart. You're already loving. And you already deserve the highest of love. But that doesn't guarantee or that doesn't um, promise you that life will be easy. But I feel like life is about to get a whole hell of a lot easier now. Look at that. The high priestess over the high priestess. Well, I could speak about the soulmates instinctively feeling each other's energy. Again, this person sitting at the water's tight, you know, and they're they really are like their hands are in prayer mode. And they are seeking wisdom, right? They do want a new beginning. And maybe I want it one way, but my spiritual team is saying, trust me, my dear, it's going to be better this way. This is predestined. This is the love of your life. Doesn't mean you haven't loved before. You have. And relationships end. We all know that. You know, and we got to be really truthful with ourselves. 
you know, even the relationships that we don't want to end still can end. But that doesn't mean that love is over or opportunities are over. They're just going to be different, right? There's always going to be something new that's going to open up. Always. Some may say when. Well, I feel like it's more when you're ready. And I feel like one of the stipulations is letting go of the past. You know, it doesn't mean you're completely healed. It just means I'm no longer willing to wait for someone. Because I feel like in this type of energy, even if love is uttered, the word love is uttered, you know, like, I feel like I'm your best friend right now and I'm saying I don't want you to wait for this. There's much more out there. Seven of Pentacles. Right over the hangman and touching the sun. And again, let me grab a drink real quick. This time, iced tea. I come fully prepared. Um, so now we have two Seven of Pentacles on the table. Two people's seeds of intention, both coming to fruition. Two high priests or two energies of each of the soulmates' intuition. Guidance. Guidance. Can you trust that? Again, that's seven. The pentacles. Patience. Patience, my child. Temperance, patience, my child. But I feel like a lot of times it's so that we can clear previous energy. Because what good would it do if we took every bad relationship? And I know I'm focusing a lot on love here, um, but it that's just what it feels to me. But what good would it do if we took the hardship from every single relationship we've been in in this lifetime and we carried it into the next now some of it let's say someone i just can't trust someone right and they're not communicating with me either well i feel like the decision is clear on that you know you have to understand your own self-worth is that what i deserve do i deserve to be treated like that because I feel like this person who has some of you in a waiting game, do I feel like there will be change? No. I feel like, yes, they may reach out and communicate, but then boom, you're going to be back in that waiting game. You're going to be discontent again. How long do I want to take that? That has to be up to you. But anyway. These seeds, they're coming to fruition. You've had patience. Some of you, it really has been about letting go. Being free and clear within yourself. And will, the willingness to at least say to your spiritual team, you know what? I'll at least consider whatever it is is coming in next. I'll consider it. Even though it's your soul seat of intentions, it's your spiritual team's job to help guide you towards it. And that's why sometimes that tower can feel very uncomfortable, but in the long run, it may be exactly what saves your life. And I may be a little dramatic there, but that's just what I'm feeling. Three of Pentacles again. Look at that right under. Where's the three? Pe oh, three of Pentacles. 
Mm, three of Cups. Joy. Celebration. Four of Cups. Over the Ace of Swords. <clears throat> um, you know, you have a lot of similarities going on here. So you may have two people who have, like, experienced similar situations. You know, like, both may have had, like, love lives where, um, you know, they weren't treated or they weren't valued. Let's put it that way. Valued for what they could bring to the table. Now, I don't want to put all the blame on the other side. Because sometimes we just have to learn about ourselves also. Again, our shadow self. Um... You know, and again, I feel like the more I wait, the more I allow someone to keep getting away with that, the more they'll just take advantage of that. I don't feel like they're going to change. So I have to make the change. Reminds me of a Michael Jackson song. I can't think of the title right now. You know, here's the Four of Cups, the image that I really love. Because if you look at this person, you have these cups, right? These are the cups that have, where am I at? Right here, yep. You have the cups that have fallen over. You know, the cups, the water has drained, the love has drained. But there is a cup being offered. Here comes this cup. What do I do? What do I do? This is why this really speaks about using your spiritual discernment. Because the choice will be yours. But this cup, it's coming from divine. It's like your spiritual team is saying, this is predestined. But you have to allow it. That's, that may be part of the challenge. But it does seem to bring you joy. And it is talking about a reason to really celebrate. It's such a different energy than what we began, what we began with. It's kind of funny in a way. I don't know if funny is the right word. But I get this feeling... Again, if I've been, like, someone's been playing mind games with me and I make that decision to close that chapter, then I, then I see them all of a sudden missing you, um, you know, and I do feel like it's going to, you know, you're either going to repeat it, you know, take them back again, and then they're going to turn around and do the same thing. I feel that strongly. Or I'm going to say, no, thank you. I've learned the value of myself. I know I deserve free and clear love. I deserve someone who, you know, communicating me, communicating with me is what they want. Loving me is what they want. Where are you? Them. Your ex. Let's just say. And they may not even be an ex yet. You know, it reminds me a little bit of like narcissistic type energy. You know, like, I'm not going to tell you all these loving, endearing terms, but I'll be damned if I want someone else to. It's like they want their cake and they want to eat it too. Are you going to allow that? I understand that there are real emotions that you're feeling. I get that. But I also get what your spiritual team is saying. Like, you just don't understand the potential of what can be. What new can be in your life. And again, the soulmates is not showing up as soulmates. They're showing up as spiritual union.
And I do feel like, um, at least from my experience of reading Tarot, which I've been doing forever, and I do oh, so many personal readings, um, I do find that experience of, what was, I forget what I was just going to say. I know you guys hate it when I when that happens. Um, I don't know, but, you know, where we're trying to hang on to someone. Like, we're willing to put in the effort, but for some reason, they're not. And I feel like we've got to learn, and I know this is easier said than done, not to take that personally. And here's why. Because I feel like this type of energy who can do that to another, why do I want them in my life? By the way, that cup is right by the full. Um, I know what I was going to say. I do feel like, um, you know, a soulmate that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. I do feel like some of the conversation will be like, I know exactly what you've been through. I've been through it myself. So you'll understand each other so deeply. Hello, Ace of Cups. Where's the soulmates? You know, a lot of times you'll see the Ace of Cups and it says love begins. Love begins. I like the moon cycles above it. Um, you know, and it may say to you, um, I think the full moon, don't quote me, but I think it's in Gemini. For December, and I believe it's on the 15th. It could be talking about letting go. You know, I feel like a full moon is the perfect time um, to let go of just what is not serving us, what is, you know, causing us strife, the things that we can let go, to let go of them. And that's so that we're willing and open and ready for whatever is next. Well, the Ace of Cups, Four of Cups. They're receiving this cup. It's putting them in the into the into the foals of energy, the willingness to have a new beginning, but it is of love. One door needed to close. It makes sense. And yes, I you know, I do feel. That for some of you, you did have love for, again, someone who's not treating you well. And it is your option, you know, to wait around. Do I think that's what your spiritual team wants? Not at all. Not at all. We have the five of swords, toxicity. And it's interesting because it's mirroring the full. Five is a change. Full literally says a new beginning. New beginning under the soul, uh, spiritual union with now the Ace of Cups over it. Hello. Or. I can continue with that energy. Sometimes that toxicity within the Five of Swords, yes, it can certainly, and it usually is other people. Sometimes it can be our own thought system. You know, where we just stop believing. We, be we stop believing in miracles. And by the way, I don't think any of this is a miracle. I feel like it's just what's meant to happen in your life. This is some of the things that your soul wanted to experience in this lifetime. As a human being, we don't know that until we stumble across it, let's say. We have the Nine of Wands coming over 
the two swords, but also temperance. Knight of Wands is about reflecting over one's life, at least the last chapter. And it's really about a sense of being proud of who you are today. I don't care what anybody else is telling you. They're wrong. You know, if someone's telling you you're not worthy of something, you're not worthy of their love or what have you, well, okay, fine. Not worthy of your love, but that doesn't mean I'm not worthy of love. Knight of Wands to me is my spirit warrior. This is someone who can look back, and I feel like it's important that we reflect, right? We reflect back. But really in the Knight of Wands, it's to really notice how much you have grown. It's the spiritual muscles you have gained. You know, it's a singular energy. And it's coming over the Two of Swords, but also touch, touching temperance. That's what allows you really to jump in the Fool's energy. Because it's not about like, woe is me or what the hell was I thinking? None of that. It's about saying, look at who I am today. And I wouldn't be who I am today without the experiences that I've had. They taught me well. And maybe this reflection is a big part of opening the door to what's next. Because in the Nine of Wands, you know you deserve love. You know you deserve really anything. Um, it is a sense of power. And it's your power. It also means you're overcoming any toxicity whether it be your own or another's. Because, you know, I feel like in the Nine of Wands, I can't deny, you know. And then you have the moon right there where the light side's looking at the shadow side. So I'm really learning about all sides. And maybe the shadow side just may mean that, you know, I, I played that waiting game for way too long. Um, but again, I don't want you to beat yourself up over that because it really is about what you have learned and how you have grown. Especially if you say, I'm no willing, I'm no longer willing to be in that type of energy. And Chris is like, well, that is divine timing, my dear. We have the Ten of Wands. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we have the Queen of Cups. I find it interesting that the Queen of Cups has her back to this Ten of Wands. Now, I know you're not a water sign, but, you know, those who've been with me know that I just read it as energy, not necessarily the sign. Though it can represent that. Um, but I feel like because her back is towards the Ten of Wands, you know, that tells me what you're reflecting over. For some of you, I feel like literally it's putting the brunt of a relationship on your shoulders. It's putting all the responsibilities on your shoulders. I swear in the Ten of Wands, I feel like someone is subconscious, subconsciously wishing for a tower. You know, the Ten of Wands, it's too much. It's too much. But healing right above that and now this queen has her back to it so i feel like this is what i have learned you know am i carrying the responsibility of other people who should be carrying their own weight do i have a tendency to want to like swoop in and you know because listen each has their own um life experiences and that's why you can't judge a sign by one person that you've been with you know what i mean because i do feel like tars is a very loyal sign but of course not every taurus is loyal um but i do feel like the majority are 
And I do feel like, Taurus, this is one of your tendencies to put, you know, like I could see you. Um, I don't know, like, I guess the energy of wanting to fix, right? But can I fix this person? I want to fix this person. I love this person, so I want to fix them. But yet, we got to learn also that sometimes it's not our job to fix another. And especially as we mature, you know, it's like, let's say I wasn't in a relationship and love was coming towards me. I would not want to be with anyone where it was all on my shoulders. Like it's an equal give and take, or it's just a no. Like that's how I feel now, but I am, you know, I am probably much older than the rest of you. So that's just some of the lessons I've learned. Um, you know, even it relates to my own relationship, which is a beautiful relationship. But, you know, again, it didn't come until later in my life. And not only that, I was afraid. You know, I had that normal fear. And um, we were long distance. And Sam did, Sam is my boyfriend. He did reach out to me. This is someone that I dated when I was a teenager. And then 40 some years later, he reached out to me. And as happy and as romantic and as beautiful as it all was, I still carried a little fear. And it really did take me five years. I mean, Sam had asked me to move in with him like right away. And it took me five years to really ultimately make that decision. First of all, I had to leave um, the state I was in, which is where my daughter and my grandkids live. So that was hard. But then something in my heart just said one day, get up. Make that, make that, um, book that flight. Because I knew once I booked the flight, I wasn't going to, I, I was going to go. And it's interesting because the things that I feared never had they come about. You know what I mean? And they were silly things. Um, and many of you know this, but they were silly things like, um, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, I work from home and I love working from home and I don't want anybody to predict my schedule to me. I want to work when I want to work and I want to work as long as I want to work. You know, I didn't, I'm someone who doesn't want to wear makeup when I'm home. That worried me, you know, how silly, but it did like, ah, I don't know if I could be with someone who like would expect me to look my best a hundred percent none of that came about when we ended up moving in together i don't think i've worn makeup maybe i mean we've been together five years now we're going at five years and i think maybe i wore makeup three four five times at the most i mean what a silly fair fear but it was real to me and it is like these silly fears are what stopped me. But in the same breath, it probably happened right when it was meant to happen. You know, um, I know a lot of you know this story, but I, I find it so interesting that this was during COVID. This was at the beginning. It was in March, actually, when I booked my flight, uh, March 8th to be exact. That is our anniversary date. Um, and um, I was a little worried about COVID because Sam has a heart condition. And I kept thinking, oh, my God, I don't want to bring COVID to him, you know, because will he survive it? Um, and then I went to get on my um, to get on my flight and I got bumped up to first class. And I was sitting all by myself. 
And then I get, I had to take two flights. So I get off that flight. And when I leave the gate, my next flight was right there. That has never happened to me. Usually I had a, I had to run across the airport to get to my next flight. The gate to my next flight, I come out one, was right there. I go on that plane. I get bumped to first class again. All by myself. Nobody around me. And you know why? Now I know why. It's so I wouldn't get COVID and then bring it to Sam. So that worry that I had, you know, and I was, my mind was blown. I like, I've never flown first class. It was just weird sitting in a plane in a seat all by myself without anybody beside me. Now I loved it. Don't get me wrong. Anyways, all I'm saying is sometimes the fears that we have, um, they are unnecessary and we do need to work through them. And I also feel like, do I think divine was taking care of me so that I wouldn't then bring COVID to Sam? A hundred percent. Did I think it at that moment? I didn't. I was just like, wow. Even when I came out of my second plane, the baggage claim was like it took me two minutes to get to it and Sam was sent was right there. I mean that was romantic. I have to tell you guys sometime, but that was romantic because we hadn't seen each other in 40 years. First of all, I had a lot of fear over that. Um and I'm only telling you these things because I want you to understand that I understand. Anyways, this queen, her back is to her back is to all that. She's coming over the reversal of discontentment and boredom. She's got a cup right in front of her. So let's follow her. We have the strength card. Overcoming. Strength card really speaks about courage. You know, it is looking within oneself. It is understanding the things that we do need to overcome within ourselves. You know, it is balance. Um, but ultimately, it's a sense of courage. Like, I feel like that's how your spiritual team looks at you. Like, courageous. Courageous to take these chances. Wherever they may lead. Again, the more you trust within your intuition, the more comfort you'll have as you start moving forward. Um, and it is an eight- also, Carl Leo, by the way. <laughs> Look at that. King of Cups. Again, I know you're not a water sign, but we have the queen and now the king of the same suit. To me, that's like-minded energy. And I have to tell you, he came in the upright. And this is someone who, both of them, you know, I want to say love, love. But ultimately, what they, ultimately, what makes them happy or what gives them a sense of comfort is having that special partner by their side. Interesting, the strength card's coming right in between them. So again, the similarities, the synchronicities of each having to overcome their own issues, you know, they own their own things that they had to deal with. Maybe even the realization of, you know, it's got to be a two-way street. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles. You know, I feel like because we're speaking about love right now, the Eight of Pentacles tells you that, you know, like if you ask the question, well, how do I know this will be successful? First of all, it depends on the seeds that the two of you are going to be planting every day, but you're planting them out of love. That's clear. But this tells you if you're willing to focus upon this love, 
then it'll only grow and grow and grow. It also asks you to be willing to be the apprentice in all areas of your life because you learn as you go also. This is a great omen also for those who may be starting a new business or you may get a promotion or even apply for a job that you may not think that you're qualified for. You know, it's almost like that fake it till you make it type energy. Um, And I know I've done that in my life, you know, where I'd say, yeah, I'm absolutely qualified for this job. Get the job, go home and be like, holy shit, now what? But just exactly what happened. I learned as I was going and I did reach the top. You know what I mean? The top of my field anyway. Can this love truly work out? When this previous love did not, all you got to do is focus on it. Show your love. Have open communication. You know, it doesn't mean that this is going to be perfect because that's just not life. But what it does mean is that, you know, if any issues arrive, you'll work it out. You'll work it out together. Maybe through communication. Some of you, there could be someone very special around you. You know, it could be someone you work with. Like, I feel like let's not even put like a name to it. And let's do what judgment our spiritual team is asking us to do. Just be the full. That's all you need to do. And that means I'm going to let the past be the past. I've learned from the past. Now I get it. And I am willing to take a leap of faith. I do love that the fool is then moving into the world's energy. So to me, I feel like this is love that will last the rest of your life. It has the potential. And I have to say potential because of free will. You know, let's say you're with this person. This person reaches back out again. What are you going to do? You know, If you communicate with that person, do I feel that this new love is going to be hurt? Well, yeah. Same as you would be. And that's why the fool's energy is so important, right? Letting go. Letting go. I'm letting you go. I'm no longer waiting for you. I'm going to start thinking about my own life. I'm going to follow my guidance. And I'm just going to see where it takes me. And I'm going to allow myself to be surprised. And boy, are you going to be surprised. And I even want to bring up the three pentacles again because we had that twice. The recognition of each other's soul. The recognition of each other's individuality in the admiration of that. That feels important. Don't beat yourself up for other people's actions. Don't think that you're unlovable because someone couldn't love you right. I pray that you don't close your heart off to love. And that's kind of what I'm feeling with judgment. I'm not saying, you know, maybe I, maybe I am going to end this, you know, I'm no longer going to wait for someone. And maybe I do feel like, I don't know if I want to fall in love again. This was much, much too hard. Well, I still feel like the soulmates are going to come. I still feel like your soulmate's going to come in no matter what. You know, and just one more little story. Um, And I know some of you know my story so well. But the reason why I tell it so many times is because it does feel like everything happened in divine timing. Um, you know, the day that Sam called me, he was in Pennsylvania. I was in Rhode Island. 
I was having a really lonely day that day. And I had just broken up with someone two weeks earlier than than when Sam called me. I mean, do you think that was divine timing? Yes. You know why? Because I'm a Virgo. And, well, I'm not going to say all Virgos are like this, but I am very loyal. I I think my morals stop me from cheating. You know, there are certain, like, you know, my ex-husband who cheated all the time. I had plenty of opportunities to cheat right back, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. It's just not in my makeup. You know what I mean? It's just not who I am. Um, and I, 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 I don't even know why I'm saying this. Why am I saying this? I don't know why I'm saying that, but I do know that the day that Sam reached out to me, which again was 40 years after the fact, was a day that I had called my ex and the one that I had just left a couple of weeks before that. Um, and I was going to invite him over. And my call waiting came in and I asked this person to hang on. And it was Sam on the other line. Do you think I then invited this person over? No. No. I said, I got to go. Goodbye. And then Sam and I just talked for hours and hours every single day and night until we came together. We still talk. I mean, I'm not saying that. Um, did I expect any of that? No, not even in the least bit. And that's why I keep asking you just to be open. It doesn't even have to mean you're saying, I want love. I didn't really want love. I wasn't even think I was, I was happy to be single. I was just having one weak moment. But other than that, I was kind of enjoying my freedom. It'd been a while. But everything changed on that one phone call, on that one day. Even the airplane rides to get here. To, you know, all, all of it was divine. You know, and I'm not going to say the Sam and I don't fight. Yes, we fight. We're human. But we overcome it together. You know what I mean? Like, we work it out together. And that's what I'm feeling with the king and the queen. Okay, enough talking about me. Um, let's go ahead and bring in the romance angels, even though I feel like we don't even need them. You know, it's a spiritual union with the Ace of Cups right over it. First of all, the Ace of Cups is unconditional love. So this is probably not the first lifetime that you have loved. This, you certainly know each other on a soul level. And that's I feel like, is what you're going to find out, figure out through what feels like really romantic and beautiful type conversation. All right, so we'll take a couple. Well, whatever wants to come out. But I don't feel like we need a lot because it feels, it feels very clear. Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Well, that's what the fold does. You could explore this new avenue. You know, I'm not even, the fold doesn't even say, you know, like this must go into a union. The fool's just like, I'm going to explore it. But this is telling you that the feelings that you have will be real. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Romantic. Let go of control issues. 
allow the situation to unfold naturally. It's probably why I keep talking about the fool. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. This could be the one. I already know it is the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Interesting. That relates back to Sam and I. You know, our our story. But soulmates know each other. They know each other on a soul level. And I do feel like soulmates eventually figure that out. Like, there's a comfort level, probably more than you've ever had. Um, even though fear can still raise its ugly head, there's still this, through communication, I feel like, well, it doesn't have to just be communication. I feel like the just how you feel. Like the feelings, that's what it's saying. Your feelings are real. And they're worth exploring. Allow this situation to unfold naturally. And this could be the one. I feel like the only way it's not the one is if you don't allow it to be the one. Which is your choice. All right, Taurus. Wow. You know, sometimes I feel like I should change my name to, like, um, the Love Turo or something because love, not always, you know, I mean, these are life readings, really, um, you know, because I do feel like there could be potential opportunities for growth within um, your money or your creativity. I do feel like this is, and I've been getting this a lot, perfect opportunity to for you to be the leader um for you to use your healing energy which you have you know and you may help others and it doesn't even have to mean you do it for a business it just it's just who you are now um but for some of you i definitely feel like you know promotions um maybe new beginnings in a lot of different areas of your life but love seems to be the overall energy in this reading and not just any love. Not just any love. And by the way, that tower that we once feared, this is a type of reading where I feel like in time, you'll look back at that tower and you'll thank God for that tower. Because if the tower never came, would this have ever happened? For some of you, the answer is yes. Because I do feel like for some of you, you make a communication. Um, but again, if that's the case, I feel like you're you're with someone who is like on and off and on and off and on and off. This is saying spiritual union. That is probably why we got marriage. I just realized that. Some of you, this may be the person you end up marrying. Or making a life commitment to. I get it now. You know. Can it be also a healing of a marriage? Of course, I'd never leave that off the table. But I feel like if that's the case, it is going to be about communication. Communication needs to flow if there's an, any issues within the marriage. Communication needs to flow. Each needs to be open and honest. And if you're not finding that, then... There may be some decisions that you may want to make, um, but I have to leave that up to you. But other than that, wow. I thank your spiritual team. I feel like this reading was so clear. Um, I feel like this reading feels very abundant, though I also feel like some of us 
just don't realize that yet. You know, it's not it, it's not till we move into it where we really understand the difference between this love and previous love. But maybe previous love was, because again, the Nine of Wands is saying, appreciate who you are right now, today. Even if you're someone who's been, you know, like on the hook with someone else, you're reflecting upon that. You're making decisions. You're you're deciding whether I want to continue with that or not. You know, and I feel like the... For some of you are like wondering, you know, will it ever get better? I feel like the answer, I hate to say this, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good. I feel like it would just keep resulting in, well, you know, the waiting game to me is a lot of anxiety. It's something I cannot control. Well, I can control it by no longer waiting. And it is in reverse. So I feel a little, I feel like a lot of you already made that decision. So you're probably now moving into this energy. You know, know your own worth. Know your spiritual team knows that you deserve the best. That doesn't mean that you weren't meant to have hard lessons, especially um, old souls. I feel like old souls, which I know I'm one, I do feel like we came down into this lifetime to really learn some of the really difficult lessons, but that's so that our soul can have true expansion. And because I feel like both of these soulmates have gone through similar type energies, no one's going to understand you better than this person. And you, and you them, by the way. And I also feel like, you know, if there's any healing left to be done, then the two of you will help heal each other. Just as soulmates are meant to. This type of soulmate. Um, and I say that because we have many different soulmates. Some soulmates are friends. Some can be family. Um, some can even be karmic. And karmics are here to teach us. You know, that just means if you find yourself in a karmic relationship, to me, it means that chances are in a previous life, you may have been that person who had made someone wait and wait and wait. And now your soul needs to experience it so you understand it on a soul level. Maybe not even on an earthly level, but on a soul level. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, I mean, what is left to be said? I feel like judgment is just saying, first of all, I feel like you're seeking this wisdom. You know, as the hangman, you're seeking it. And judgment is, is like, we're listening. We're here. We'll help you. We'll guide you. Listen to your intuition. Even pay attention to songs you hear. Some of you, you may already know who this person is. And all of a sudden, you start hearing a song from back in the day that's like, oh, that reminds me of so and so. That's why I say, you know, we don't always have to wait. Like, if if there's just this feeling within within you, um, you know, again, like you keep hearing a song or you keep seeing the same numbers. There's something that relates back to this person. Take that as guidance. Take that as signs. And don't be afraid to reach out. You know. Yes, sometimes we get shut down, but at least we know. I don't feel like you'd be shut down. And I'm not even saying that's how this is coming together. I feel like it's just coming together. And it's probably going to be different for different people, but 
I love that the fool then goes into the world's energy. So I do feel like this has the potential to be the rest of your life. Maybe the person you marry or make a lifetime commitment to. But I feel like both want it. Both want partnership. Both want to have true love, real love. If I'm going to fall in love again, then I want to be, I want it to be like this. Well, if I've reflected back and I'm able to let go of that past, then I feel like that's exactly how it will be. Free and clear, just to love. Does it mean that life's issues won't come in, but you'll work it out together? This could be the one. Your feelings are real and they are worth exploring. And allow the situation to unfold naturally, knowing that divine and your spiritual team has your back always, always. All right, guys, I'm going to let that be. Um, I thank each and every one of you. Like, I appreciate each and every one of you, even those that are new. It's, you know, it's like my, my spiritual team is saying, like, you're new, but you're really not new because you are part of our soul family, our soul tribe. So welcome. Um, those who've been with me, uh, I, so much gratitude truly so much gratitude um thank you for your comments you know your healing energy can help heal others just through your words alone so i thank you for that uh and you know different people are going to be at different places so you know just like i was telling you about my experiences if you have your you know if you have experiences that you feel could help another certainly feel free to leave them you know i know i know not everyone likes to leave comments but um sometimes i feel you know to me the comment section is the healing section that's just how i feel on my channel anyway um i thank you for your donations it is what keeps me on youtube without your donations i couldn't be here i just couldn't be here youtube does not you know, it doesn't, YouTube no longer, I mean, maybe for some, you know, maybe if you have a million subscribers, I don't know, but I have to tell you, they pay less and less and less and less. It's just unfair. And all the work that I put in, um, and I, I pour everything into each and every reading. Um, and it's not that I ever, it's not that I even do it for the money though I do need to survive. Um, so I thank each and every one of you who donate. And I know not everybody can afford it. it. Your presence alone is really, you know, so appreciated. I thank you for sharing the videos on your social network. Uh, that certainly helps me to grow. And thank you for that, truly. Um, thank you for allowing me to be me. Especially for those who watch the readings to the end. Thank you. I know not everyone has the patience. And, you know, I get it. I do get it. But sometimes people are looking for those quick little answers like, Oh, why I fell in love? Well, here's love. Right? Here it is. But what did you need to do? What does your spiritual team want you to look at? That's the problem with short little videos is, is it, it feels like it's all promise with no substance. Now, I'm not putting down other channels because to each their own. But I've had a lot of comments where people tell me like, oh, your video is too long. You need to do 10 minute videos. No, you need to do 10 minute videos. I need to do what my soul tells me to do. To do. And I do it for you. You know, I put no time limit on it. Whatever it takes, it takes. But I want to make sure that it's showing you everything 
You know, yes, it's showing great love, but it's also showing you action steps to take if you so choose. So thank you. That's what I'm saying. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching to the end. Um, truly, I feel like that's where all the beauty is at. I don't know. Either I'm just not like stimulating someone's mind um, or they just literally don't have patience. But whatever it may be, um, I thank you. I, you know, I want to say I wish you all a very happy holiday. But again, right away, my heart goes right back to that, that sadness of some who just cannot, you know, like Christmas where presents are being bought, but they have no money. Um, I've been in those shoes myself. You know what I mean? And um, I just want you to know that I am really thinking about you. I am praying for all of you. Um, and I'm praying for all of you that if this is really the type of energy you want in your life, that it manifests in your life. But do your part. You know, when we learn to walk hand in hand with divine, well, that's when miracles seem to happen. They're not miracles. They just feel that way. I love you guys. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye. Oh, it didn't even want to end. <laughs>